the Caribbean Aquaterrestrial Solutions Program operated by GIZ and uh, partnering with CARFA, Caribbean Public Health Agency. We had um, today a composting session. We partnered for this project with ICA and the Ministry of Agriculture here in Grenada. The reason is that um, currently CARFA executed the water sampling and um, they found that there are still um, remainings of fertilizer in the water. So we know that farmers apply too much fertilizer on the land and then it is washed out and it has also negative impacts on the marine um, environment. What we are aiming to do with NIFO is to help protect our marine protected areas by conducting safe and good agricultural practices on land because we know what happens on land affects what happens in the marine area. We are definitely concerned about the quantities of organic waste going to our landfill and projects like these that serve to divert the organic waste from getting into our site would certainly be um, something that we would facilitate. So we had Mr. Troy Augustine from the Ministry of Agriculture demonstrating the process of making composting. And all the members here are grateful for the exercise we're doing today and they all vow that we're going to change some of our habits. Compost is decomposed organic matter by natural, by microorganism. Okay? And what it does, it has a lot of nutrients based on the food stock you put in there. The compost is good for crops. It's a good substitute for fertilizer in a lot of ways okay? because it holds the soil together, it holds the moisture, it improves the soil structure and it gives you um, People claim that it gives you a better crop. I wouldn't say that. There is still the age of the organic matter because it preserves the soil, and that is important. The compost itself consists of wood chips, grass, um, manure, different things. Um, the seaweed, which a lot of us have controversial issues about, is also good ingredients. Basically, the compost takes three months to complete. At the end of the cycle, you do not see any of your ingredients. In any one gram of compost, you'll have probably 80 to 90% of that will be microorganisms, mainly bacteria. And you have, at the start of the compost, you'll have what is called mesophilic bacteria and the topsoil. These bacteria will be the first to start to work. They will work up to a degree of about 40 degrees centigrade. As the compost becomes hotter with time, you'll find the thermophilic bacteria start to work. And they're going to work from a degree of 40 degrees centigrade to about 60 degrees centigrade. Now they produce the most energy in the compost. So you may want to stick to probably between 40 to 60. And to maintain that temperature, you may need to turn your compost and make sure it has enough air and so on circulating through it. The other set of uh, bacteria is called acetomycetes. They break down most of the lignin and the cellulose in the organic matter. Once they break this down, the other bacteria could work on it. Fungi play a similar role to the acetomycetes, where they break down the tougher material, the tougher organic matter. So you'll find the fungi and the acetomycetes are not in the heat of the thing. In other words, you're going to find them towards the outside of the compost. They are also associated with the curing stage of the compost as well. Now we'll go to the macroorganism, and we want to emphasize here the earthworms. Earthworms' role is to break down the organic matter, and what, it, what, it, what left from that is called casting. One earthworm could produce its body weight of casting in one day. And that casting has very important nutrients. You have nitrogen, um, calcium, magnesium. And these, without the outworm, this material would not have been available to the plants. You have the organisms and you have the material which are heterogeneous in nature. So you need to ensure that the environment satisfies both of them. First of all, what you need to have is a carbon to nitrogen ratio, your feedstock, what you call the feedstock. That feedstock must be of a certain proportion. The nitrogen should be at least a quarter to one half of the total stock in the compost bin. The carbon part will be things like the dry material, leaves, straws, and so on. The nitrogen part will be like the green material, green grass, succulent grass, and so on. So the organism needs to have these things to work. The ratio is very, very important. 
If you don't have the ratio right, you may, the organisms in the feed or the organism in the feed might be lacking certain nutrients that they cannot get and the composting just wouldn't work as it should. The microorganisms need oxygen for energy to build the body and to break down the organic matter. If you have too much oxygen, the compost is going to just dry out, it's going to just stay there. If the oxygen is not enough and the water tends to be high, what's going to happen? Whatever um, nitrogen you have in the compost, it's going to leave the compost in the form of ammonia. So your oxygen must be right. Moisture is the third most important thing. Microbes need a stream of moisture on that organic material for them to act. Your moisture should not be too high nor too low. In any composting, you need between 40 to 60 percent moisture in the composting. Now, if your moisture is too high, what's going to happen? It drives out the oxygen and you starve your microbes to death. If you have too little moisture, then there is not there won't be much activity of the microbes, so the composting is going to be very, 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 very slow. Once the temperature is right for the compost, you'll find that the microbes will build themselves up, they'll multiply, they'll do what they have to do, and you have heat generating. If, they, if it's not generating heat, your bacteria wouldn't survive. They, they're just kind of dormant. You should get the heat probably about 10 days after. It depends on the size of the compost, and it depends on the material you have in there. You know, if you already have material that starts to decay already, then you know the heat's going to be higher. You want to maintain the shape, so we have a, a height that more heat will be generated. So that's why I'm removing the edges because the edges are not um, they're exposed to the wind and you don't, basically you don't get any bacterial activity taking place there but you get more in the center of the pile so the top of the pile all around it is not nothing is going to be happening but the activity is going to be inside so all the heat will be generated the last thing you can know whether or not your compost is doing well is you're going to see it start going down the heap and the pile start going down over time okay normally you're going to see that within the first two weeks let's say about two, three weeks after. So normally in the compost, you want to have as much surface area as possible. So that's why you see people chop the bits to get it smaller. So you have exposed more of the surface so the microbes can work on it. So these are the key factors in your compost. Your microorganism, you don't have to go and look for them, they're there. And now coming into the farming community where they generate quite a lot of the organic waste because um, we're always daunted when we see the huge quantities in the bins and so on, the um, banana um, stalks and that sort of thing, the grass waste and so on. So any initiative that would serve to cut down on the organic waste going into the landfill would be encouraged. If they have proper material, they can even produce organic and organic products can be sold then um, differently and um, this offers also a different economic possibility. It's very important that farmers not just understand the nutrient requirement of the compost but the other capacity of compost to help them build the soil and to grow better and more food for the family and the nation on a whole.